Hello, my name is Sean Bolin. I am with New Horizons Computer Learning Centers out of Omaha, Nebraska. Today I'm going to share with you my top five PowerShell tips. We're going to talk about the help system, updating the help system. We're going to talk about using the full help option, some about help files, the show window help parameter, as well as using the get command commandlet to help you find commands to utilize. The first thing to talk about is updating the help system. Beginning in PowerShell 3.0, when you install PowerShell, PowerShell has a limited set of help information available for each commandlet. Administrators typically learn this by surprise. They'll, they'll use the get help commandlet to look at the help for a commandlet and they'll see just a little bit of information show up on the window and then there'll be a message down at the bottom that says, oh, by the way, this is some truncated information. You don't see all of the help information. Now, the reason Microsoft did this was so that administrators would always have the latest help files on their machine because the documentation is changing so rapidly. Help PowerShell is, is such a dynamic tool that it's changing. What you need to do as an administrator, so you're running PowerShell 3.0 or later, just pop into PowerShell and run the update-help commandlet. When you do that, as long as your machine has an internet connection, that's a prerequisite, it'll go out, retrieve all of the help files for the built-in commandlets, as well as any modules that you have loaded. Your help will be up to date. You'll have access to all of the full help system, and your machine will go out and update those help files transparently in the background once every 24 hours. Only two little caveats to that. First of all, when you run update help, it's best to run that with elevated privileges or run as administrator. Sometimes modules get loaded into some system directories, and if you don't run with elevated privileges, those modules help files won't get updated. The second thing to note is, what if I'm on a machine that doesn't have an internet connection? Then I can't update my help system. Well, you still can. What you need to do is go to a machine that does have an internet connection and use the command save-help. And what that allows you to do is designate a directory, save the help download to that particular directory, physically pick that up, take it to another machine, and then run update help, and you'll have the ability to specify a parameter to point at that saved help location. That will allow you to update those machines that don't have an internet connection. So go out there, fire up help, run update help, and you will be good to go. The second tip deals with using the full help option. When you use the get help commandlet, which is the commandlet that we're going to utilize to get help, the syntax is get dash help space and then the commandlet you want to get help on. PowerShell's help system mimics the help system of other systems like the Linux or Unix man page system. It mimics it in that it has multiple layers or multiple levels of help. If I just type in get dash help in the commandlet, what I'm seeing is the basic help or what I like to call the level one help. Well, there's a lot more help available for each commandlet than just the basic help. And the way you access that is to put dash full at the end. I'll give you a really quick example. I'm going to run get help. And I'm going to type in get process. It's one of my favorite commandlets to utilize. And what this is going to give me access to is just the basic help. And so you see I see the name of the commandlet and the synopsis and the syntax and the description, and that's great. Okay, It's a wonderful set of help. But if you look down at the bottom in the remarks area, it says essentially, oh, by the way, there's more help out there, and here's how you get it. I can put a dash examples. I can put a dash detailed. The one I like is the dash full. Because if I put dash full with my get help commandlet, I'm going to see the full help. In other words, I see everything. I see the details. I see the examples. I see the syntax out there. Now, when I ran that, you saw a whole bunch of scrolling go by. I apologize for the scrolling, but you'll notice the difference in the data that I get. I still get the basic information, the name, the synopsis, the syntax, the description, but then it gets fun. Each individual parameter that this commandlet supports is fully documented. And so I'm seeing all of those parameters that we can utilize, every one of them, all the documentation, the syntax, the rules, etc. 
notice I see some notes for this particular commandlet. Some, oh, by the way, here's some things you want to know if you're using this commandlet. And then I see examples. And for me, that's one of the very best ways to learn how to use PowerShell. Open up the help system for a commandlet, use the full help, read the basic description, and then pop down to the examples and just start using it. We learn best by doing, and this full help shows me all of those examples. So all I had to do to get that was to type in my get help commandlet and put dash full at the end. It's as easy as that. The next thing I want to show you is the about help files. We all know that PowerShell contains help for each individual commandlet. I just demonstrated that. But there's a whole other set of help files built into PowerShell that are there not to explain how to use an individual commandlet, but to teach you about PowerShell. And that's where the name about help files comes in, is they're about different topics. They could be scripting topics, they could be different concepts, PowerShell remoting, etc. The biggest thing about these about help files is that most administrators don't even know they're there. So there's this wonderful documentation right at your fingertips that you don't even know is there. Let's take a look at it. The way I find the about help, about help files is simply to type in get help about underscore and we're going to use a wildcard or an asterisk. Now each of these about help files is named about underscore and then whatever the topic is about. So by typing in get help about underscore star, what I'm seeing is a listing of all of those files on my system. Now I can scroll up and down in the list and take a look. When I see one that looks interesting, like I'm a big WMI advocate, I work with WMI all the time. Hey, wait, there's a help file about WMI. Cool, let's check that out. Get help about underscore WMI. And that's all I have to do. I hit enter and now I've got a built-in tutorial that's going to teach me how to use WMI or Windows Management Instrumentation with PowerShell. There are dozens upon dozens upon dozens of these about help files built into your system. It's just a matter of going out there, seeing that they're there, and then start reading some documentation. Remember, get dash help about underscore asterisk and you'll start seeing all this cool stuff out there. The next tip I want to share with you is the show window help parameter. So far the help that we've been taking a look at has been inside the command prompt and that's fine it's quick it's easy it's there no big deal but for some people reading information inside that command prompt window is just not very friendly it just doesn't sit well with their eyes and they, they it looks a little bit okay jumbled and things like that i want to see it in a nice gooey window i'm running windows so i want to see something in a window well as long as you have powershell 3.0 installed in your machine you are in luck when i run my get help commandlet all i'm going to do is put dash show window at the end. Now this is automatically going to do a full help. So we're actually combining this with one of our previous tips. So let's take a look at this. Here's my get help commandlet. Here's my get process. That's my commandlet that I like to utilize. And I'm just going to put show window at the end. Ta-da! There's my show window. And I'll just maximize it so we can get the full effect here. This is my full help, but notice it's in a GUI window now, so I can start to highlight things if I want to copy and paste, whatever. Notice it even has settings. Each of these are sections of help. Maybe I find that I just never use the output section. I could actually change this so it didn't show the output section. I can even find in here. So for instance, if I was somebody told me, hey, there's a CPU parameter in here or something like that. This is just a search window. It's a Windows window. So all I have to do is go ahead and search, and now I can find all instances of the CPU parameter. So that's your show window parameter for the help command. If you want to use help but see it in a GUI output window, there's no better way to do it. My next tip is get command. It's kind of a funny name for a command, the get command command. Well, what this does is it shows me all of the commandlets that I have available to me in PowerShell. All the built-in commandlets, all the commandlets for my modules, and all those kinds of things. 
Now, get command is both a blessing and a curse as far as I'm concerned, because when I run get command, I'm literally going to see hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of commands scroll by. But I'll show you a couple of cool ways that you can utilize this. So I want to find out all the commands that I have available to me in PowerShell. I type in get command and watch out for the scrolling. I don't know about you, but that's scrolling by a little bit too quickly for me to read it. Okay. This is every single command that I have available to me in PowerShell. Now, if I were trying to do something in PowerShell and somebody said, well, just go look up the command. And OK, well, how do I do that? Well, run get command. If this is what I had to do every time I wanted to figure out how to do something in PowerShell, I'd be here all day just to find one single thing, because this is a huge intimidating list. Well, that's where parameters come in. Maybe somebody told me that I can work with my services. Yeah, I want to need to start a service or stop a service, something like that. But I couldn't remember the command that they told me, but I know it had the word service in it. So I do get command. And this time I'm putting in a parameter dash noun. Remember, all of your PowerShell commandlets are in a verb dash noun format. So what I'm doing with this particular get command com syntax is I'm saying, show me all the commands. That's what get command does. But only show me the ones that end in the noun service. So now I've got a usable list. Get service, new service, restart service. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted. Restart service. You can do this with any noun. You can also do this with any verb. So maybe a friend of yours told you that, hey, there's a command out there. Um, it's add something. And you don't remember what they told you. But you knew it began with add. Well, I can do get command, verb, add. And what that's going to do is that's going to show me all of the commandlets that begin with the verb add. That's a little bit bigger list, but it's still a reasonable list. I could scan through this in 15, 20 seconds, and it's like, oh yeah, that's what I wanted. Add computer, that's the one I wanted. And then, of course, I can use my help system to look up the syntax. Now, with get command, there's one other one that I like to utilize a lot. It's really handy for me, and that's the parameter parameter. Again, I'm kind of sounding redundant with this, but let me give you an example. A lot of times there are commandlets that have a specific parameter, like dash computer name. Anytime you see a commandlet that has dash computer name, that means it's got a built-in way to go talk to other computers on the network. Well, that's kind of cool. What if I want to find out all of the commands that have a specific parameter? get command, dash parameter name, and then the name of the parameter. Let me bring up that syntax for you again. Get command says, go get me all of the commands. The parameter name parameter, I know, sounding redundant again. The parameter name parameter says, only show me commands that have the parameter of computer name or dash computer name in them. Now I picked that one because it's a favorite one of mine because dash computer name allows us to go out and find or talk to other computers on the network. So for instance, I see a command let here restart computer. Now of course I'm going to look at my help system, find out how it really works, but essentially I can type in restart dash computer space dash computer name and I can begin to remotely reboot other computers, which is really handy to do. Well, my little tip here with get command was to be able to find all the commandlets that support a specific parameter. So get command is definitely your friend. It can show you all the commandlets that are available and with a couple quick little tips and tricks using dash noun, dash verb, dash parameter or parameter name, uh, you can narrow down that list. By the way, that dash parameter or parameter name is available in PowerShell 3.0 and later. So if you're still on PowerShell 1 or 2, it's time to upgrade and you can't use that. Showed you a few of my favorite tips with PowerShell and in each of these are designed to make PowerShell easier to utilize, quicker, get you to do the job faster because that's what PowerShell is all about. 
you want to learn more about that, take a look at Microsoft's course 10961, Automating Administration with Windows PowerShell. Absolutely no PowerShell experience required. When you take that course from us, we assume you know nothing on day one, and we're going to build you into a good PowerShell administrator from the ground up with these tips, plus a lot more.